And I'm here to tell you, any religion or way of life that teaches mystery God teaching or God is a mystery is Christianity and it comes from Yaku's creation. Okay? And that little boy that you call Muhammad did not teach black people. He taught white Arabs. White Arabs. And he had from nine to uh, 11 wives, and the youngest one was nine years old. That's right. Now, how come y'all don't teach that? That's right. You're running around with your nightgown over pantyhose, army boots in July and August? Huh? Standing by a bus stop waiting for a Campbell? How come you don't teach that? You're always trying to disrespect the most honorable Elijah Muhammad out of envy and jealousy because his knowledge and wisdom and understanding surpassed it everybody's and you have nothing better to replace it with. So now you're going to try and disrespect it with your dumb self. Now, and if you are uh, 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 Sunnis and Orthodox here in America who be running back and forth to Mecca trying to prove to Arabs that you're a Muslim and they're not even Muslim, how come they don't give you a gallon of oil out of each barrel? How come them same Arab that you pray with on Friday, what you call Juma prayer, how come they selling pork right in your face? Pork, alcohol, drugs, and tobacco, and giving little girls candy for oral sex in back of the store in front of your face, and then Friday, you down on your hands and knees praying, praying with those same desert rats that's in your community, destroying your people with bad food, alcohol, drugs, and tobacco. Come on, face reality and stop being so stupid. And all these so-called Muslims who have so much, supposed to have so much teachings and so much wisdom, how come you praying with them? If they care so much about you, how come you don't, why, why they don't uh, finance you to clean up all the poverty in your community? See, you got no answers. And anybody who think that I don't know what I'm talking about, well, just come, and, you got another chair here. Come and sit down and talk to me. I'm not going to debate you. I'm just going to share wisdom with you and take you where you're supposed to, where I'm at, where you're supposed to be, but you're not there yet. That's why you're running around here with all this here, uh, uh, different ways of life, trying to add on and take away. See, when you ain't got nothing of your own, you got to add on something or take away something to try to make yourself look like you know something. And that's why I tell y'all, when it comes to that Bible that y'all read, I wouldn't even use it for toilet paper. When it comes to that Quran y'all read, I wouldn't use it for toilet paper. And that rug that y'all pray on, I wouldn't even piss on it. And I'm telling you that to your face. Because I don't care nothing about anybody who's trying to block the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad when you know it's right and exact and the best program for the people. Ain't nobody on earth raise a dead man but the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Name me one person in America that raised a dead man. A dead man. Okay? To... Like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He built a nation with drug addicts, alcoholics, hoes, prostitutes, gangsters, whatever crime you could think of that takes place in America. He took them and raised them up to be 
civilized, cultured, refined, dignified, and highly intelligent with supreme wisdom that they can stand in front of the world and say, black man is God and white man the devil. And then let you know how powerful he was. We have, you have, the world has searched for that mystery God for trillions of years and was unable to find a mystery God. So they had to come and face the reality of the fact that the true and living God and the only God is a son of man. And the only one that was able to recognize the universal most high God in the shape, form, and fashion of Master W.D. Farad Muhammad was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you all know that. And when the most honorable Elijah, uh, um, when, when, he, when he went to, when his wife, a queen, Clyde Muhammad, the mother of the nation of Islam, the only mother of the nation of Islam, and you can't put nobody up, uh, up there next to her as the duplicate because they don't have her track record. I, I taught the whole history on the, the, what is the duty of the MGTGCC? The book is available. And when she passed by the, the meeting, attended the meeting that Master Farah Muhammad was giving, and she heard him. She was so impressed, she came home and told her husband, Elijah, there's a man down the street you should go here. And he got himself together, on his little khakis, had 10 cents, and he went down the street to have Master Farah Muhammad. And when he sat there and listened, when after the meeting was over, when he went up, when Master Farah Muhammad gave them the opportunity to come up and shake his hand, when he went up there to shake his hand, and he said to Master Farah Muhammad, I know who you are. You're the one the world been waiting for for 2,000 years. And Master Farah Muhammad bent down and said to him, who else knows that but you? He said, you keep quiet. Don't speak on that until after I leave. After I leave, then you can speak on it. And I will back you up. And after Master Farah Muhammad left, and the messengers start teaching that, that that was God in person. Nobody else knew that it, that was the law in person. None of the pioneers knew. His wife didn't know. His children didn't know. Nobody knew. Now, when you say nobody knew that that was God in the person, what, who are you talking about, brother? The, nobody knew that was, that was God, God in the person. You talking about Farad Muhammad? Nobody knew that that was God in the person of Master W.D. Farad Muhammad. All the pioneers. The belief at that day, at that time, mm -hmm. his wife didn't even know. His children didn't even know. Okay? Now, when you say that, remember you just got through talking about the dirty, dusty, rusty desert Arabs. Right. Wasn't Farad Muhammad an Arab? What was his nationality? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just asking. Just for the people out there for clarity. What was his nationality? Shabazz Allah, God. And I can prove it to you. You ain't got no wisdom out there that can surpass Master Farad Muhammad's wisdom. Take this book here. You can't surpass it. There's no material out there that can surpass it. And every time anybody open their mouth, they got to mention something from this book. Yeah, but, but wasn't Farad, uh, where he come from, wasn't he an Arab though? Huh? Wasn't he an Arab? We don't use the word a Arab. You, you say original Arabs are black people. Okay. I'm not talking about the white ones. Those are devils. Was there two Farad Muhammad? Remember, people was arguing about. No, 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 there no, no, was no. One with Prophet Nobu Jalali. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Prophet Nobu Jalali taught a uh, more science uplift fallen humanity. Prophet Muhammad did not was not was excellent. But Prophet Muhammad never taught black men as God and white men as the devil. Did they know each other? I, be, I, I feel they did. A lot of people say they did know each other. Just like, okay, I'm in New York. I know you. You know this one. You know that one. There's a congregation taking place. Uh, 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 uh. All right. We are. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, a lot of people misunderstand. They're always trying to attach it that. Master Farah Muhammad was Noble Jawar Lee. Noble Jawar Lee taught Master Farah Muhammad. He was Marcus God, all that. Master W.D. Farah Muhammad 
first appearance in America was 1910. He was there 20 years before he revealed himself. Did he really exist? Yes. For Rob Muhammad? Because yes. nobody seems to see him. Nobody had pictures of him. They got drawings of him, but not no real photographs of him. Brother, because they don't, they, they, they're so busy uh, listening to all these born again Christian mentalities that they don't come into the reality of the teachers. You can go right down there, which I've done, to the uh, main, the Warworth Library, the main library on Warworth Avenue in Detroit. Go down to the sub basement. They got the whole history right down there. Okay? Now, the reason why I know what I'm talking about, I've been to Detroit more than once. I've sat down with elders that was taught by Master Farad Muhammad. Okay? We had a brother, uh, uh, Kareem Allah, right here in Temple Number 7, elderly brother, okay, who was taught by Master W.D. Farad Muhammad, but was never given the opportunity to speak in the temple. And we used to treat him to dinner, and we, he used to live in Fort Greene. We used to go down to his house after the temple meeting and be in his house 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and he'd be sharing that wisdom with us. Supreme Minister John Muhammad, the messenger's youngest brother, when, 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 when they was all, when the Bilalians, when everybody, all those who went with the wild became Bilalians and there was no Savior's Day, we was given Savior's Day right here in New York. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that was taking place in New York, Louis X don't have no knowledge of because he was not there. Malcolm ran New York. The, the teachers of the most honorable like Muhammad was deep rooted in New York by guess who? Malcolm X and Clarence 13X, the father of the God nation. How come you never mentioned justice? Just, well, justice was, uh, was, was with, with, uh, with uh, 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 Clarence. That's right. Yeah. How come nobody mentioned justice? No, justice did good work. He, yeah. They worked together. Mm -hmm. They worked together. Now, oh, now, let me say this. Now, when Malcolm first came out of prison, he was in Detroit with his brother Philbert for a while. And then when he came to uh, um, uh, uh, Philadelphia, he lived with Jeremiah Shabazz. Because Jeremiah Shabazz helped groom Malcolm too now. Jeremiah Shabazz uh, uh, from uh, Philadelphia. Okay? No, Justice did excellent work. Oh, yes. Okay? But the one that came out, hit the street full force was Clown 13X. Okay? Justice was with him. But justice wasn't of, uh, you know, they worked together. Together. Okay? All right? Justice did excellent. I had utmost respect for justice. Now, when it was Malcolm X, the father of the God Nation, that deep rooted the lessons, not no Quran, not no Bible, the lessons in the New York area, okay? When Farron Khan came to New York, he just walked on Clarence 13X and Malcolm's foundation because the lessons were out in the street. So that's why it was easy for him to teach, and he did a good job. Farron Khan, from 1965 to 75, Farron Khan did an excellent job. He burnt New York down. But, it, but, it, but, it, but he didn't have no barriers because the lessons were out in the street. So the people gravitated, not just because of him, because of the teachings. He was smoking with the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. From 1965 to 1975. Right. And Malcolm also groomed Muhammad Ali. So a lot of people like to, like to give that credit to somebody else. But nobody was out there like Malcolm. So, so you understand? So Malcolm, when, 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 when Malcolm was, uh, was with Muhammad, another thing about Malcolm, did you know, oh, this is this. Malcolm used to teach Sam Cook. When Malcolm was teaching Sam Cook and dropping on, and, and one of his, like, you know, be having a conversation, and kid Sam Cook asked him, asked him a question. I got this from, from a reliable source who was there. Um, Sam Cook said, well, what, what's it going to be, uh, 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 what hap what's, what's going to happen or where we go from here? And Malcolm said to Sam Cook, a change is going to come. And Sam Cook took that and did the song. Mm. 
Sam Cooke. That's where he get that from. Right, right. And Sam Cooke was like a, a, a Sam Cooke was no Uncle Tom. Sam Cooke was taking one to take control of all of his masters, like uh, uh, Michael Jackson and Prince. They wanted to, and, and Ray Charles. They wanted to take control of their their man. They wanted to control and do their own thing right. and cut out the middleman. And that's when Sam Cooke got set up. You understand in the hotel with that process that with that hoe. You know, you know the story about the uh, uh, he was trying to take a bath, all that. But happened, he landed with the girl. <laughs> and the girl took all his clothes and ran out the hotel with his clothes. So when he was running down to the manager, the desk or whatever, with my clothes up, he didn't have no clothes on. So they used, she used that excuse to shoot him. Well, you know the story on that. Nah, but what happened? Yeah, for the people that don't know, finish that story. Sam Cook, mistake he made. You got money, you're on top shelf. Why would you waste your time in a cheap hotel? Go to a good hotel, spend some money. But I guess he wanted to keep, you know, has to be want to do things behind un, un, undercover. So he went to the hotel and um, having lived with this girl who was a prostitute or whatever she a hoe, a prostitute. And uh, while he was sleeping, she took all his clothes and ran out with his clothes. And so he had no clothes. So naturally he went down to the of um, the desk to the, the manager of the hotel, complained about it, what happened to his clothes and what had happened. And so he was pissed off, hot, I guess he was excited, whatever. And so the, the, they said that he, the, she, the, 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 the manager of the hotel used it as an excuse that he was trying to harass her, he threatened her, she was afraid, so forth, and that's the reason why she shot him. That's how that went down. Mm -hmm. Right, Sam Cooke was a powerful man, okay? He just wanted control of his, uh, what you call, like Michael Jackson, wanted control of his thing, like Prince, anytime you, anytime you, <laughs> anytime you want to control and do your own thing, <laughs> they go, you, you go, you're going home. <laughs> okay. Now, um, now you know, back then, them singers, they definitely had to really be influenced by Malcolm. They were. For example, Marvin Gaye. Did you hear the songs Marvin Gaye was playing, man? Was singing? You know, you know the heaviest one was? Who? Curtis Mayfield. There you go, <laughs> Curtis. That's right, Curtis Mayfield. Yeah. Okay, uh, Marvin Gaye, Curtis, Mayfield, Temptation. All those were then. All those songs was educational songs. See, today you got this garbage can stuff out there. Oh man, yeah. You wanna know why? Because ninety five percent of these singers out here ain't nothing but alcoholics, drug addicts, <laughs> and homosexuals. Mm -hmm. Ninety five percent of the music world is. Alcoholics, drug addicts, and homosexual. That's true. 95% of your movie world, alcohol, drug addicts, and homosexual. That's true. 95% of your sports world, alcohol, drug addicts, and homosexual. 95% of your religious world, alcohol, drug addicts, and homosexual. You okay? Mm -hmm. You ever see Malcolm kiss a white devil? No. You ever see? You ever see Malcolm on I a seen, platform? I seen Malcolm Little kiss one. Who? Malcolm Little. No, no, Malcolm X. Right. I didn't see No, not Malcolm. <laughs> Never seen Malcolm. No. All these, all these Catholic priests out there. Mm -hmm. It's all over the world with pedophiles, child molesters, and all that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Malcolm kiss a white Catholic priest? No. Have you ever seen Malcolm up on the platform with homos? No. Malcolm was God, brother. Malcolm was God. Let's get real here. Did Malcolm have a white father? No. Malcolm's father was a black man. Who rode what he was a Garveyite. Garveyite, and they threw him on, threw him on a railroad, railroad track and cut him in the air. That's right. And put his mother in the mental institution. In the mental institution. She lost her mind. Well, how come they don't teach on that? That's right. Especially on Black History Month. But, but so thank you. But yet and still, they always talk about Malcolm's assassination. Now check this out. You know they tried to make Malcolm a homosexual now. Who? They tried to make Malcolm X a homosexual. Brother. They have a book out. I don't know if you know. Did Brother. you know that? 
brother. There's a book out written by a white brother. man. Okay. Accusing Malcolm of being a homo. And the white man that wrote the book is a homo. He's that. No, he, he's that. He's okay, that. but he's a homo. <laughs> he was a homo. Yeah, basically. And got paid to to try to discredit. Malcolm was a black god, and you can't take that away from him. Carl Lib was a black god. You know, and you can't take that away from How was you and Khaled Muhammad relationship? Woo! Man, I, I love Khaled. I know he Khaled. loved you, brother. I love Khaled. Mm -hmm. I, everywhere Khaled was, I was there. Now, check this out. You know what I love about Khaled? What? Khaled never told a lie. Name me one thing that Khaled said that wasn't true. Can't. Know what the problem was? What? Black. <laughs> Light have a problem with black. Not all light. Some light have a problem with black. What the call they do? He thought the black man was God. That, that speech he made in, in, in King's College? I was there. He, he was writing the exam. What he said was true. Oh, oh, you don't like the way he said it. Truth is, you only can say truth one way. <laughs> Okay? Man, please. Call, and I'm not telling you, no. Carl it was another Malcolm. Now, let's get real here. Do you have another Carl it out here today? No, hell no. Do you have another Malcolm out here today? No. So, what do you got out here? Negroes, bootlicking, Negroes. Bourgeois Negroes, educational Negroes, homosexuals. Drug and, and alcoholics. <laughs> And that's that, that and that's why nothing is being done. Basically. And that's why Almighty God of Law, in the shape, form, and fashion of Master W. D. Farah Muhammad, is using the forces of nature to bring it down. And that's rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. Mm 